Hi, this is Laurel, and I want to introduce you to our guest today. I'm always bringing you people who I think are world class, and if you don't have a pen and paper, go get it, because you're going to want to hear and take notes on everything this man tells you. His name is Roger Salam. He lives in Tampa, Florida. He's an award-winning inspirational speaker, best-selling author of several books on sales and marketing, but his real wheelhouse, in my opinion, is real estate and really strategic different techniques that I know that you've heard. So if you're a real estate investor or like, oh, I've already heard enough from real estate, what he does is really unique and different, so stay tuned. He's a recipient of the Thought Leader of the Year Award, um, which was given by the National Academy of Best-Selling Authors, and he's been featured in America's Premier Experts. Roger is the chairman and founder of the Winner's Circle, the largest and most respected invitation-only mastermind forum. It's for authors, speakers, real estate gurus, info marketers, and thought leaders, really successful, cool people only get to hang out in his winner circle. So prior to that, he was the number one speaker and trainer in the world-renowned uh, you know, circle of the motivational speaker and author, Tony Robbins. So uh, he has quite the background, and he's traveled all over the world. Um, he's delivered 5,700 professional talks to various corporations, nonprofit organizations, and educational institutes in North America, Europe, and Asia. He's a graduate of UCLA. Um, he has three daughters that are absolutely lovely. Um, I wonder how old they are because, you know, my son's 16. Um, he's most passionate about sharing his knowledge, empowering people to reach their highest level of personal and business success. So Live Out Loud community, welcome. Like, just, like, go get a pen and paper and just absolutely welcome uh, Roger Salam to the Live Out Loud community and what we're about to hear. So I'm going to be interviewing Roger through a whole series of brilliance. So Roger, welcome to our Live Out Loud community. All right. Thanks, Laurel. Thanks for having me. And by the way, my oldest just turned 16. I've got three, Ooh, nine, nine yeah. 11, and 16. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> so one of the things I do want to start out with is I do want to let people know that I'm actually going to your winner's circle. Uh, and they're going to find this funny because they know that I actually don't like cruises. Uh, I think it's like, you know, being like contained, but you know, it's only because it's Roger. I absolutely love this man and I love the community and his tribe. December 10 to 14, I'm going to be with him on a cruise out of Florida uh, and into Mexico. So I know Roger, you're going to share with us more of it. Let's start with this, you know, question. You know, you've been in the personal development industry for two decades. Um, you're the number one speaker for Tony Robbins for like a long, long time. Um, and now you have this focus on masterminding. Tell us what, like, what is the mastermind, and how did you get started down this path uh, after uh, your years with Tony? Yeah, you know what? One of the things, Laurel, first of all, uh, appreciate the welcome in the Live Out Loud community. I've been following your community for a long time, and it is certainly my privilege to share my thoughts on to your community. And um, I've been a student of success back since the in the late '80s. And this is what sort of Tony taught me to study successful people. And I was looking for, is there such a thing as a holy grail? And I know that the book that is like your Bible is Think and Grow Rich. And so is mine. And here I'm reading about it, studying Napoleon Hill. And he said that studied all the successful people. And he came up with 17 principles. And out of them, three are foundational principles and 14 are supporting principles. And of the three foundational principles that he found, among all the top successful people that Andrew Carnegie commissioned him to study, he found that principle number one was definiteness of purpose, which is knowing what you want. Because if you don't know what you want, nobody can help you. Number two, the moment you know what is it that you want, in order to achieve it, the most powerful strategy is mastermind. And I said, wow, the holy grail right here, Dr. I mean, Napoleon Hill is sharing with me. And right then and there, I focused on mastermind. And I said, if that is it, I'm going to focus on it. And if you want to know, you know what a mastermind is, very simply from a definitional perspective, it's when two or more people get together in the spirit of cooperation and harmony to accomplish some goal or results, a third alternative mind is formed from the collective, which then becomes a mastermind. And it's wonderful that when you and I get together, and we're brainstorming. It's that a collective mind creates the third. And so this is where the more the merrier becomes. And over the years, I've been uh, now since 2007 is when I started the Winter Circle Mastermind. I was looking around for a mastermind. I couldn't find one. So I started my own. And soon I'm telling you that anything good and great that has happened to my life 
since then, I can direct, not indirectly, directly attribute to the winner circle. And if you want to know the ABCs of mastermind, it's not a long drawn out thing. It's A's for access. It's you have access. It's not what you know. It's who you know and who they know. So access to the right people will take you a lot further. And B's for best practices. There's not enough time to make all the mistakes by yourself. These are all the high level gurus and speakers, authors, high successful entrepreneurs. So learn from their best practices and see is for community. Heck, create a like-minded community. My goal is to create a like-minded community you know, for a lifetime. So it's very lonely out there. We as entrepreneurs, not everyone <laughs> can relate to us. So when we get together, we can talk shop. We don't have to explain. We know what we are. And if I were to summarize, I've been interviewed many times about the topic of mastermind that said, can you create one word about mastermind? And I I haven't been able to quite one word, but I've come up close is two words. Mastermind is accelerated growth. Anything you want, anything you want in life, you probably could get it through any other source, but any other strategy. But if you apply the principle of mastermind, you'll get it faster, stronger, better, cheaper. You name it, the, use the superlative and you'll get there faster. Who doesn't want to get there faster? Who doesn't want to get there better? Who doesn't want to get there, you know, all along the way with all your faculties, with your health intact? All of these things will bring you into the collective form of mastermind. And hence, we've created this group of people. It's by invitation only. They come in and the whole purpose in the spirit of cooperation and harmony to help each other and to strategize. So that's that's one of the things that I've now focused on and wrote a book called in, in the um, Mastermind Your Way to Millions. And, and, so, and I, I, just want to, I just want to speak to that a little more. Like, not yeah. only why do people join, you know, specifically your mastermind, because our community is heavy masterminders too. I mean, almost every program that we do, we have circles of mastermind. And the context of that, you know, it sounds like you do what we do, which is very Napoleon Hill-like kind of masterminding, which is, you know, really – well, exactly the description you gave, because you, you've been and I've been to, you know, what I call these other so-called gurus masterminds, and really it's just everybody sharing their business and maybe a little bit of input. I mean, tell a little bit more, like, what masterminding for you, like, what's different? Why do they join? Because, like you said, masterminding for life, it's a principle. Like, I have, once I've learned it from Bob Proctor in my, like, 20s, which was, you know, just a few years ago, I've never lived a year without masterminding. I couldn't imagine not having it. Um, but I really want people to get the, the seriousness of it and the distinction that I think you and I both hold around it. Yeah. You know what? One of the things that I, I heard you say that you and I, the people that we hang around with and the people that come, it's not that they have not heard the mastermind, like you say, that you heard the word that your income is going to be the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. They know that stuff. But if they really know, number one is it's not just your income. It's who you hang around with and listen to will determine your destiny. And your health, your wealth, your happiness, your attitude, and just about everything else will be affected by who you are hanging around with. And if you like I've heard you tell many times that if you want to make more money, the first thing is hanging around with people with more money. I mean, how simple could it be? But people don't do it because they're so comfortable with the group of people that they are, that they are with. They don't trade up their friends. So and I say the same thing is that, hey, if you truly believe that who you associate with and listen to will determine your destiny, then hang around with people who are better than you by design, not by accident. So we, you and I get the privilege. Sometimes I pinch myself this on a monthly basis. This group of highly successful people, speakers, authors, thought leaders, they come and they pay. I should have paid. To be there, but because the reason they paid is because they take it seriously in this group. And the main reason they my leaders join, it's not because they uh, are here to for a seminar. The main reason they're doing coming to my group, at least, is for joint ventures, is to do collaborative uh, endeavors. And this is, I'm probably known as, the other one is the joint venture king. That... Joint venture is the number one reason. It's the fastest way to grow. 
and anything, in my opinion, from a business perspective. So it starts with that collective mastermind and joint venture is a result of that. Well, and I also think, I just want to add this, like I'm going on the cruise, um, and most people know that I'm, I mean, I've literally paid to get off cruises because, you know, the containment issue, <laughs> yes. I'm kind of a free spirit. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, you didn't really know that, but I thought I'd kind of like play because like my whole community is like, let's go on a cruise. I'm like, no, let's stay free in the mountains. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but I'm going because of this group. I mean, it, it's, it's who you want to spend time with. I mean, I know that you've gathered, you know, your tribe, like I've gathered of mine and I you know I'm going to plan to meet people to joint venture with people I'm going to train people but I think too many people say yeah but I'm really comfortable I'm scared to meet people or they don't want to stretch out I mean part of the reason why you're successful I'm successful is because we always stretch out I'm okay. always curious about who I can meet and who we could you know joint venture with who we could play with I call it um, because I love doing business and you know there's just so much. So tell a little bit about the cruise and kind of the experience that people, you know, can be in, in that mastermind that is just going to be very enhancing for everyone. You know what? Uh, one of the things that a lot of uh, people have different ideas about joint venture, and this is, uh, I'm going to tell you about the cruise just one second, is that, that it gives you the chance to make an unlimited amount of money in a very short period of time and with no money or risk. And you're the only person that I know who can who was teaching people to make money in three days. I mean, that's an incredibly short time to change their mindset that people have never made money to come. So at this gathering, it's a high level of that, that people who are already have broken through those barriers, now they want to create joint venture money or risk. And if you want to generate the cash the fastest way, if you want to get with no money, you want to build your list. You want to gain market share, or you want to, you know, uh, totally in this fast way, joint venture is the way. And the sad part is that 99% of the small or medium sized businesses don't understand or use joint venture. But the big businesses use, like Walmart, Coke, Amazon, they use JVs. 20% of their income of Fortune 500 comes from joint ventures. And interesting thing is that 50% of those JVs are with competitors. Barter is another form of joint venture, $12.1 billion marketplace in the U.S. And in our world, the internet business world, the internet marketers, and we use affiliates, that's another form of joint venture. The word for joint venture, another way is what I call leverage. Leverage is the key. And most people, when they think of leveraging, they mostly think of OPM and other people's money. But I'm going to just for a second give people an idea that when they come on the cruise, what are the things that they can leverage with besides money? It's the most obvious. Another more powerful than money, in my opinion, is other people's time. You can also leverage other people's reputation. You can use other people's space, their advertising. You can co-op. Co you can leverage their distribution. You can leverage their sales force. There's a lot of solopreneurs that come on the cruise. These are author speakers. They have a small team. They don't have a sales force. So if, then there's also people coming in that have large sales force, huge, thousands. So you can join venture with them and leverage their sales force to move your products or services. You can leverage other people's employees. You can leverage other people's technology. And another uh, subset of money, so you'll say, I don't have any money. And in the real estate you and I teach is to leverage other people's credit. You can use uh, leverage other people's talents. Other people's access, which is one of the reasons you're coming. It's not just who they know, it's who they have access to. You can also leverage. So you are there to leverage their memberships, their credibility, their underutilized resources. Some people have resources that, that are sitting there. That's one of the reasons that uh, sort of I did. I had, I had a big mansion and I'm not using all the time. So other people started doing events at my mansion. So you can, of course, Use their relationships, their skill sets, knowledge, their list and database, which is most obvious that when you're coming on the cruise that you're going to leverage their list and they will promote you. In other words, you can leverage anything and everything. And the best joint venture deals, the best joint venture deals are the deals, you know, that I've seen what it takes to make the deals happen and then 
you have to have the right attitude and you have to have the good work ethics and focus on creating value for others. If you have that, and if you can get rid of your ego, you will do that. And of course, the best JV deals are always based on relationships. But one of the things that I say, the best JV deals are those where each party feels that they have the better end of the deal. Let me repeat that. So given that, I just want to interrupt that because I think you and I, are, I feel like we're like joint venture king and queen, right? So yeah. <laughs> talk a little bit about um, just the, not only the expanded possibilities, but um, like you said, what kind of joint ventures are best when everybody wins? What I find is that a lot of people just don't know how to do the deals. So talk about some of the components of a JV. Like one of the number one things I'm asked for around JVs is is how the deal's done. And I always say, you know, like from a percent of pay, I don't think people know like a percent of pay. Like what are other kind of what I call contractual agreement components in a JV? Does that make sense? Absolutely. So there, I mean, those are the, the details. And these are... Uh, people who are coming on the cruise, these are uh, people, uh, speaker authors, they are doing JVs, but they're not doing it at a scale that it's possible. I mean, they have, don't have the exposure. Remember, the, the, I said that who you hang around with will lead, determine your destiny. And once they do it by design, then here is where will you find these people who are able and willing? And it's incredibly difficult. It's limited to 100 people that they come to do this. And the, what you're referring to is the mechanics and the component part of the joint ventures. Typically, what we find in our industry is that if it is a pr uh, product that is, uh, or, or that you don't have to spend personal time, it's a physical product that you ship, and that's what we're marketing together, and or access to a course that you have created online, where once you've already created, those joint venture Revenue share is typically 50-50. But when they're doing, when somebody's doing service services, that they have to put in a lot of their service time into the thing, those are typically up for negotiation. It's anywhere from 10 to 30%, uh, as high as could be 40%. But those are usually not 50-50 because the, the person is delivering. There, there's a time component for them also besides just thing. But typically, the other thing that is, uh, critical in that revenue share agreement is the dollar volume. Are we selling a hundred dollar product, a thousand dollar product, or are we offering a ten thousand dollar or hundred thousand uh, dollar product or service? That will also di dictate the amount of uh, revenue share agreement that they create uh, from just strictly from a revenue share. And then, of course, there are other subsets of those joint venture agreements of clearly delineating what the responsibilities are and what are the um, fulfillment angle of it, all of those things are typically spelled out in the joint venture agreement. And, and we provide those sample joint venture agreements for anybody that if they don't have one. That's awesome. So, you know, you mentioned the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships, right? And again, those are the JVs that you work with. Um, they're the people that you surround yourself with. I'm sure the people on the cruise are going to be very, very close to you as well. So give us some points about building quality relationships, because although that's said frequently, and I think it's assumed people know it, you and I know that the, there's some techniques involved in that. Absolutely. And then the, uh, this has been sort of, I think I, my father is my hero on, on that, that he's always focused on, on this aspect, is that quality of your life is a quality of your relationship. And here, here's a departure for me, that and we live in this high-tech world, bring in more high touch. I don't manage leads and funnels. I manage friendships and relationships. And that has paid me huge dividends in terms of focusing on doing that. And I was talking to somebody that was uh, this morning as my another big, very big uh, guru. And he just pointed out to me that what I do, instead of creating referrals, I create referral pipelines. I mean, what would you rather have? I mean, you're going to bring a tanker one at a time, or you're going to have the Alaska pipeline straight from Alaska right down to your bank account. So the pipeline, while you're sleeping, the pipeline is flowing. And when you do that, you literally don't need hundreds of people. You just need a handful of people that have, you have a pipeline relationship. It's like a channel marketing directly for that person. And the biggest advice I can give you 
It is so simple. And I say that before I even say it, I say that please just take that I know out from your you know voice, little voice, because I know oh, it's the killer of learning. I know it's the killer of learning. So that my number one tip, it's a almost it's a reminder more than anything else for most people that the most important tip for building quality relationship is get into the relationship to give, not to get. The getting part is almost automatic. And the other mistake people make is that they always think that it's not always that the hand that you give to is not always the hand that gives back. It's a universal hand. It's the when invisible hand that's giving you back. Good things are happening to you all around because you are continuously giving, asking, going into the relationship to figure out what can you give? And I don't care if it's a billionaire or if it's a mayor of a city. I have taken billionaires out to lunch, multimillionaires out to lunch, and uh, authors, speakers. I literally I read a magazine and I liked it. I found out the author who wrote the article and said, I want to take you out to lunch. And you have something to give them. What do you give? You figure out that part and and. Um, from, for example, the billionaire example, people, oh, what do we give to a billionaire? Oh, can they have all the money? Yes, they have all the money. But you're not talking, you're not going to impress them by giving them money. But every billionaire has their charity. They have their charity. If you ask them, what is your favorite charity? What is, what is, what's the cause that you are uh, championing that excites you the most? And then if you go and donate to their charity, if you help them with their charity, they will be way more impressed you will come into their inner circle than by trying to go their business route, and then you're going to do business anyway. So if you want to know the biggest, I gave you the biggest number one tip for relationship building, I want to give you also the biggest mistake in building relationships. Biggest mistake in business relationships when you're trying to build it is don't rush the relationships. Don't rush the relationships because it has its own time. Every time you meet somebody, I have met some people for years, didn't do anything, and just stayed in touch, cordial, professional, and then how can I, and just keep me informed, hey, this is what I'm doing, if it helps, here's an article that I thought of you, and in their particular industry, sending them, keeping you active, what can I do for you, and then all of a sudden, one day, the, the relationship blossoms, because you find an opportunity that's right for both of you. Don't chase contacts, don't chase leads, don't chase joint ventures, develop relationships. That's going to be the key. And if you come on the cruise with that same mentality, and one of the reasons that I do it on a cruise, because it's the social setting, because the best deals are not done in the boardroom, they're done in the living room, they're done in the card room. One of my real estate business partners, he plays poker with all of the um, high the bankers. And that's where he gets all of his uh, deals. Best deals are done in the golf course. You know that. And best deals are done on the cruise. Laurel, it's funny that over the years, this is my eighth annual cruise, that I have seen that deals that never get done on land gets done on the cruise. And I attribute that perhaps partly to the pina colada and the waves, <laughs> mixture of the boat. So people let their hair down. We are in a rush, rush, rush all the time when we're in a here. One good thing about that, your containment is, hey, you're there. You're not going anywhere. So people let their hair down. They, they're in a fun mood. And when they relax and they're seeing that they bring, this is a place, this is the only event that where they bring their spouses, their children. And they do in this social environment, but they have a different attitude and build getting deals done. So when people leave, they're actually not leaving with um, an idea. They're leaving with money. They're leaving with these deals that are literally they have to go convert it into cash. So, uh, and and what I'm going to share with you now is I'm going to share with you that. How do you build, manage, and grow those referral partner relationships, those referral partner pipelines? I'm going to give you literally seven steps. 
there's a thing called I used to be unconsciously competent about that because I'm just doing it and because I'm good at it. But then uh-huh. with the help of my friend, um, yep. sometimes we don't see it. And they sat me down and said, OK, let's break it down so you can actually this is not a woo woo stuff. You can teach it. How can you get this pipeline created and how does it start? So we're going to we're going to do that totally on on the on the cruise so that we set my my gift is I want to create the environment where magic happens. I want to create the process. Here is the truth. You don't need me or or anyone else. When you put good people together, when you put this A type personality, these successful people together, good things will happen no matter what. But if you create boundaries, if you create processes, if you create uh, procedures and the environment, not good things happen, magic happens, great things happen. And people, that's the environment we create. And we also know how to find another thing that I do. I know everybody. You're coming on the cruise. I already know who are the one or two people that we, you should, that I'll make personal introductions to that you need to meet and you know, get to know them and vice versa. So who's going to be the most and of course, then you can go out on your own and, and meet all the others from that perspective. So, Roger, talk a little bit about, uh, I know you talk about the content and what's going to happen. Um, just remind us, and just repeat kind of one more time, what are the kind of people that are going to be on the cruise and the dates, uh, what people need to do when they fly in, like give some more of the logistics. So if they want to join, they can actually, you know, also say they joined Laurel on, you know, the Absolutely. first official one I'm going to stay on for. <laughs> <laughs> And what, you know what, the, uh, who's going to be on the cruise is one people always ask me that. You know, it, of course, the famous names is, are the Laurel Langmeyers and the Kevin Harringtons of the world. They're going to be uh, on the cruise. And, but let me tell you more about the people that are niche gurus that you may or may not know them name-wise, but these are very, very successful people in their own niche. And I'd say Dave, David Fagan, uh, who's an icon builder, former CEO of Gorilla Marketing, now has his own Hollywood uh, a report, a Hollywood business show um, in, in L.A. And he's going to be on, on the cruise. And Bonnie Bruder, I just, I just had a television interview in New York with her. You definitely have to meet Bonnie. She, has, she, is, uh, she came on the cruise three years ago. She used to work with Tony a long time ago. We just uh, worked with Harvey McKay, Alex Mandoshian. And now she's just starring on her three sitcoms she's her new movies coming out this month and she did an interview with me um that's so excited that she has done in the last years over 162 interviews of successful people that are celebrities that are authors speakers and she goes oh my god this is that's what she does then she decided that you're going to have a cruise full of all the people that i want to interview so she's bringing her cbs producer with her three camera shoots She's going to do a live show recording while we're on the cruise. I and love her, that. Yeah. And she, her show is syndicated to over 2 million people. And she's in the L.A. market and the New York market. Those two markets are strong. And then, of course, through social media, iPod, iTunes, and all the – I mean, iTunes, they download. All of those things are done. She's going to be on, on, on the cruise. Um, Ed Hoyt, uh, who just sold his company, probably, I don't know, $100 million plus. And now he's just doing business consulting and advising. He's going to be on, on the cruise. Um, the Steve Earle, he's the president uh, and CEO of Strongbrook. They're a huge real estate company and a personal development company. They're going to be on, on the cruise. And the another gentleman that's going to be on the cruise, Matt Lloyd, he is the uh, founder of Mo. And I'm going to be speaking at his event next week. I'm flying to... Uh, Phuket, Thailand, to speak at his event. Incredible. He's Australian. He lives in Malaysia, runs an eight-figure business. It's a huge company. And he's not only coming, he's bringing about a dozen, two dozen of, of his top, top affiliates that are uh, promoted his programs all over the world are going to be on the cruise. So if you're looking for affiliate marketers that are looking for good products to promote, there's in a silver platter, I'm going to bring them to you. Ari Page is going to be there. And you talk about alternative uh, business funding. Ari Page's company's growth capital guarantees anyone 
they will bring you fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollar business line of credit guaranteed and uh, not personal line of credit these lines of credit that don't appear on your uh, personal credit so it doesn't affect it uh, Ken Davis who buys hundreds not 10, 20, 30, I'm talking about several hundred properties a month is going to be on the on the cruise. Dusty Rawlings, uh, president of Oxford uh, Wealth Management Company, is going to be on there. He literally is saving people, not you know, cutting the taxes in half and doing advanced strategies, wealth building strategies. I just uh, When I was doing my interview in New York, I met up with an old, old friend, Ron Hillman. Ron's going to be on the cruise, and he's got an incredible incredible simple idea that I believe is, is a winner. He's creating a, a online membership club like a AAA, but just very, there's a whole concept of rich in the niches, the fabulous food club, saving everything related to food. And I, he showed me this whole, and, and he's going to, he hasn't launched it yet. He's going to be launching it while on the cruise as his first. Stephanie Davis, like you, another incredible leader. and she has over a million people in her organization. She's one of the top network marketing leader, and she was the president of the, that company for the U.S. division. And but majority of her people are in Asia market. And uh, Matt Lloyd also is in Asia market. So if you have a product that you're looking want to go abroad with, there's a group of people that are going to be there. Uh, Larry Binet is going to be a, on the on the cruise. He's the founder of the Speaker Authors Networking Group, saying and one of the masterful connector. Um, so Todd Singleton, they are, he's a marketer to the chiropractic community. So anyone who has a following, these are people that all have a large following, a niche market following that we can cross promote our businesses. So as I say, people come, and this is just a, the tip of the iceberg, and I'd be here, you know, don't want to take time to elaborate the 100 people, these are the people that are kind of people that are going to be on the on the cruise for you. And the, the logistics of the dates is December 10th through the 14th. And we're going from Fort Lauderdale to Cozumel, Mexico. And you can go to the website, twccruise15.com. TWC, you can see it on the screen. And for the Live Out Loud community, you have also a special promo code. And it's case sensitive, live out loud with the L O and the L uh, capitalized, right? As you see on the screen and for your special uh, investment for this particular thing. And my really, if I, I'm sharing, this is, this is a limited number. We take only hundred people every year. And the last, my uh, Shirley Johnson who's my director of special projects in charge of the cruise said that these, about 85% is where we're at. And this is for my members, and we invite some select guests. So if you feel you are ready for it, then come and join us. Because Absolutely. if I have to sell you, you're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're not exactly. Ready. And it's great. Yeah. Your holiday, it's going to be a shift in uh, your planning. You're going to have new projects and new opportunities and new things come alive when you join us on the cruise. And... Um, Roger, I just want to thank you. Like your masterminding work is brilliant. The quality of relationships work and that the uh, intensity that you highlight, it just reminds everyone in our community um, of all of those pieces they need to be putting into their plan and executing in their own lives every day. Is there any uh, kind of following, closing words you'd like to say to my folks? Yes. What, what, what I'd say that um, I, <clears throat> if you want to have the best 2016 ever. This is the time. Most people are taking out their legal pad or their thing after they get over their hungover, hangover on you know, January 1st. They're sitting down. This is what successful people do. These are highly successful people. They're coming on the cruise and they are mixing the fun and pleasure, but they are setting their goals for 2016. They're, by the time they hit uh, January 1st, they're not planning. They've already planned, and they're hitting the road running. That's why they're way far ahead in the game. So I take you, uh, give you this invitation to come and join 
I mean, what is worth spending four days with Laurel, Kevin, Kevin Harrington, and the, the names that I mentioned, the kind of people that I, I, I shared with you to have this opportunity? And people are coming to this, not just glad handing of exchanging business cards of shallow networking. This is about building relationships that you get to know this small group of people that you'll call them friends by the time you leave. And, and when, we get, when we hit Cozumel, we party, and we go uh, all kinds of events planned specifically for the, for the cruise. And so if you have any questions, specific things, if you want to bring your spouse or your children. Oh, by the way, this is the first year we're also having a teen mastermind. Because, you know, your kids are uh, reaching, they're 16, and mine, our oldest, just turned 16. And so I want to influence the next generation. And one of the things I love about you, uh, Laurel, is that how you give scholarships. You almost like give every person that attends your program, you give them a free ticket to bring if they have a teenage son. Because you want to teach their princ those principles that you're teaching their parents to the kids when they're teenagers. You change their life now. You don't have to wait till you're broke and then start again with your philosophy. So I want to uh, do that. So we'll be having a team mastermind um, this year for that as well. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak to your Live Out Loud community. And I hope that you will take advantage of this incredible opportunity to take your life and your business to the next level in 2016. Absolutely, and Roger, thank you, and uh, the rest of you. We will uh, continue to be in conversation and dialogue as we are. And uh, Roger, you have an amazing day, and thank all of you for joining and spending your time with us today.